possible. Um, Joyce, do you want to call the meeting to order? All right. I'd like to call a meeting to order of the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight. I've got 6.03 p.m. And um, thanks, everybody, for being here. Uh, the first item on our agenda um, is uh, to review the meeting guidelines, which are basically speak one at a time, be respectful, considerate, and courteous, concise, and not repetitive. Okay. Um, and have we got, uh, uh, I think Jennifer is usually taking notes. Um, members yep. present. Um, we've got, I see several people. You're very small on my screen. Okay. <laughs> yep. um, but I see everybody's here. We even have the press. So, yep. Yep. And, 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 and is, is Jeff there as well? No, Jeff is not here. I'm trying to text him. I don't know if he's still joining. Um, okay. He is there, and, and uh, Fran York is on on Fran's screen. Fran's on screen. Yep. Yeah. Well, and uh, you know, I saw Fran on the screen, but when I see Fran, I think Fran Fortino, and I don't think this is Fran Fortino. Is it? No, it's Fran York. She's yep, a, Fran York. a resident of um, Deerfield, and she's on the Deerfield Council of Aging. Oh, okay. Okay. Welcome, Fran. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Good. Glad to be here. <laughs> All right. Great. Okay. Um, then I, we should probably get going on the agenda. I have like, I like the Starship Enterprise at home where with screens. So I sometimes get a little lost. So sorry about that. Sorry. Um, the first item is uh, looking at um, minutes. Uh, for approval, um, are there any comments uh, or suggested revisions for the minutes of our previous meeting? We're going to skip that. I did not get those finished in time for today. My apologies. Okay. Well, let's table that then. Um, uh, item B under discussion items. Um, we have a discussion of the space located at 23 Plum Tree Road as a potential home for a, um, for a South County Senior Center. And maybe this I can turn over to uh, Jennifer to start and then everybody else join in. Sure. Um, so um, earlier this year, I want to say, was it May, Joyce? Um, yeah, May. That uh, um, all three town administrators and um, Joyce, in um, Tom Fighting Cabbage and um, Crystal, and, and my apologies, I forget Crystal's last name. Yeah. Um, she Nichols. was our board of yeah. from um, Sunderland at the time um, before you joined us, Dan. And um, we took a tour of 23 Palm Tree Road, uh, which has been known as the Sanauer Building and Oxford Printing Company, I think is the last. And this particular uh, facility is um, just under 12,000 square feet. It's listed, it's built on approximately um, 3.465 acres and it's easily accessible to uh, public transportation. It's not very far from 116 on the corner. Um, and to be quite frank, it looks beautiful and it would be a wonderful location to put um, our center. Our center is, as many of you are, all of you are aware of, we're sporadic throughout the communities, um, which sometimes pe causes confusion amongst people as to where um, events are taking place, you know, when hours are open, although we advertise in the newsletter and we did a mass mailing this year. Um, and when we had the needs assessment conducted through UMass, um, one of the top concerns of all participants was having a space that was um, friendly, usable, and central, you know, one central location for everyone to um, participate at. This has been something um, since I came on board that's been voiced from all the seniors who participate at the center. And one of the things that I printed out for tonight, and I know that I keep everyone in the loop on statistics, but last year for 2022 calendar year, not fiscal year, from January of 22 to December of 22, 
we had 120 new members join um, the senior center. And then this year, we had 126 new members join the senior center. And this year, um, we currently have who attended at least one event throughout the year, received a service or support from the senior center has been um, 353 individuals. So the new members and then, you know, those who have been existing members. Now, this data is pretty, um, pretty accurate. We have a scan system where everyone is issued a membership card. We track it with a mobile health, handheld scanner. Um, you know, there may be a couple numbers under um, because sometimes people don't sign in, they forget their card. Um, but 353 um, people is what we've serviced this year to date. Mm -hmm. um, we also have one new, um, new member form that we haven't entered. The data was a little hard to read, so we're following up. So that would bring um, this year's total to 127 yeah. with that information. The 12,000 yeah. Well, so <laughs> what that, what that there, where it's duplicated, meaning we've had 353 people come at least once, but people have been a number of 12,441 times to center. So that means like Sharon comes, you know, more than, you know, she comes a multiple times a year. It's mm -hmm. going to be in the duplicated column yeah. versus, you know, um, if Marie only came to one event, you know, it would be in the unduplicated numbers. So that's like a reflection of how many individuals served. And the 12,441 is how many times, you know, yeah. or how many services have been provided between the events. Um, and the events are like 11,855, rides have been 193, services have been 377, and logs means um, telephone communication or correspondence that's not specific to a case, so it's been about 16. And I know that number is low because I don't track every single phone call I get because not everyone who calls for support or information is a member of the center. Yeah. And then sometimes if you're in the middle of doing something, you don't always track that. Sure. And Joyce, I can send you a paper copy of that. It's just the data I pulled off of um, my senior center. Okay. So, um, but we've been averaging this year um, around 65 people a month um, per day, a day, you know, for activity. Um, when you look at the dates, so that's 184 dates in range. We've supported about an average of 65 people. Some days you get five, some days you get 70. You know, it, it fluctuates. Um, but since our last meeting, uh, in Ju so July we had about 76 people um, per day per month. For August, it was we averaged around 73. For September, 71. For October. Um, 64, and so far for November, November about 52. And that number will go up because next week we have our food truck and we have other events, um, including like Friendsgiving at the end of the month, which is really popular. But that goes to show you the need for having a large facility that can accommodate, you know, all the programs and events and activities that we have. Um, on the tour, and if you've looked through this handout, um, you know, you can see the shape of the building. And one of the great things about this is, while it has an abundance of offices, it also has an indoor hall that connects so people could use that as a walking track in the winter and the summer, you know, when the weathers are extreme. Um, the kitchen facility in here would need some updating as well as creating kind of a community uh, congregate area. Yeah, I was gonna say there's um, not a big room, is there? Well. There isn't in along this area. When we did our walking tour of that facility, one of the things that was noted is those are not load-bearing walls. So um, we would be able to remove some of the truss walls, I think is what it was referred to as. I'm not an architect. I don't know all the correct terminology. But you would be able to take some of those interior walls down to create like a long congregate room to make it large enough so you could host 100 or 200 people in that section. Mm -hmm. But the great thing about that is while construction is going on, we would still be able to be in the space in the front um, 
and instill like the office space. So for example, um, we wouldn't have to have this particular building that we're currently sitting in. We could still be down there. We could still do activities um, because there's other space in the building that could be usable. Right now, um, we're not offering regularly scheduled congregate meals. We just offer more of a continental style snack. And then for larger events, um, you know, we do use the kitchen for some things, but, um, you know, we could still offer some of those while those renovations are being done more of a continental or crock pot style versus a baking type of a situation. Um, and the ladies in, in the audience here could, you know, speak to their experiences as to what we've done for different um, food things. And, you know, the grab-and-go is currently offered by LifePath. So seniors who want a regular meal at lunchtime typically will drive to the church and they pick up their lunches. But because we're in multiple locations, as you just saw, the delivery driver brings the food here. Mm -hmm. The LifePath dining services person comes here in the morning, packs everything up and brings it to the church. And then preps everything at the church so then seniors come and, and do that um and one of the things that you know um as you know we lost our program coordinator and one of her concerns was you know the back and forth type of a thing it was a lot and it's a lot um you know the staff we we make it work because this is our situation yeah. but being centrally located now not in five years would definitely alleviate a lot of um a lot of issues. Logistics. Um, yeah, logistic wise, but it also would make the seniors feel like they matter because one of the things that I've heard even before I started this job is that seniors feel like they're on the back burner consistently, you know, with, with the communities. I mean, Sunderland's done a great job bringing, you know, senior housing, but that took, you know, it, as everything, it takes time. I know Deerfield has a campus plan in mind, but who's to say if that's going to be another three to five years between planning, getting things passed through town meetings, um, and then, you know, seeing what comes to fruition. I know the Tilton Library is going to be going into the auditorium at the Congregational Library um, in Deerfield. So, you know, that's going to take them a year to do whatever anyway. So who's look, who would be looking to purchase the building and own it? So the information that I got from Jess Kravitz, who's the town administrator for Sunderland, is Sunderland is interested in purchasing this property. And what, um, what and would they want to do with it? For um, rent or some anything? Stuff there as well? That I have not had any answer, and I don't know if Dan can speak yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, just started roughly just, at it. Yeah, but yeah. there's obviously space there. For the, right. It's, it's, a, it's a decent sized building. I don't, I don't think I don't think it's still old thing. I think that there would be some space, you know, if dear, um, Sunderland wanted to have some offices, you know, in there and we count, figured out how to coexist um, because, you know, there's ample office space for myself to have an office, which, you know, I don't have an office with a door. Mm -hmm. Chris, our outreach coordinator, when he's trying to do private meetings, he doesn't have an office with a door. Yeah. Um, and you know, our dining services person could have an office. Our South County Triad group, um, who we work with regularly, could have an office. And then there would be ample offices, you know, along uh, the space for, for sharing. And because we don't have a schematic of the floor plan in here, um, this is what the property. So actually, we kind of do, but it's not, yeah. you know, based on rooms. Yeah. Um, but how this is the walk in here and right in the front just from my observation here is a really nice reception area here you know it's mm -hmm. like a built-in section we wouldn't have to renovate any of this front stuff at all there's a nice copy room supply room over here this right now is kind of like split into two offices with a big large space um joyce can attest to that that was the room where they had the um the tables that or, or counters that were kind of propped up with beams and we talked about just taking those out and making that a large exercise space because it wouldn't take a lot of renovation um and the reason being is our exercise classes have boomed we have 85 people signed up for enhanced fitness they don't come every day 
but sometimes we average 40 people, you know, in that space for that class. Mm -hmm. So people have to be able to spread out. Um, and this also shows on the top, you know, so you can kind of mm -hmm. see this, this is two offices here and there's offices all down here. The kitchen is kind of like down this hallway. There's a partial, like a half, like a, I would call it a half bath. The reason I say that is because down over here, there's a full bath mm -hmm. that has a shower area. So we could have seniors, if there's a, you know, an accident mm -hmm. or something, people could go in and clean themselves up, um, which is something we would want in a new space, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then in here, they did some renovations to the space, the interior during the pandemic because they weren't working in the office. Um, so unless we wanted to change the color scheme, which if we go into being more of a um, dementia friendly facility, you know, we could work on that. But mm -hmm. those aren't major renovations. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the renovation part would be the, um, the interior where the kitchen is. We'd probably have to, you know, replace the oven and that type of stuff and maybe install an ANSEL system. Um, but it's the space already exists, the water and hookups already exist. Um, it's just making it so we can have the congregate space on the opposite side down this end. So even if Sunderland decided what's, what's the back end? The More back end offices. here is all offices. Okay. Offices go around, but there's also some larger spaces. There is a nice um courtyard. This is kind of a mm -hmm. semi photo yeah. of the courtyard In here. The Oh, here's a better photo. Yeah. Um, courtyard. And this is the front well, front entrance. Mm -hmm. There's nothing here now without you know, without yep. those there. But there's like a nice station here. The reception area is kind of opposite on this wall. Mm -hmm. Like where reception desk is. This is the um, courtyard. And the great thing is if you look at the property, it's three point four five six acres. We wouldn't have to leave the location to have large events. Right. We could, set you know, tent. set up tents. Yep. Um, we could also offer outdoor activities. So if somebody wanted to play cornhole, bocce ball, horseshoes, you know, we can have that regularly up there. So um, we really have to figure out, uh, Sunderland buys it, what the remodel would be, what the rent would be. Yep. All of that stuff would have to get figured out. Yep. And then we'd probably have to do another tour and then... Um, that's really that's really it. If if someone's gonna, you know, take the lead, then we just have to really see what what yeah. the rent would be and well, how much space we would need and what kind of what remodeling is gonna need to happen and what kind of cost that's gonna take. Yep. And then it might be worth, you know, pulling the seniors if it are are they good to go the far end of Sunderland? So I four miles from, it's, it's not, not even that far, but it's I, I will leave people's minds as far. So yeah, um, we just have to. So, so in addition to the two folks here in the audience and Fran on the screen here, um, and I don't know if you want to open it up for public comment yet, but one of the things that I wanted to talk about was where if you take out the budgets and um, I emailed you the budget choice, the draft. Yeah, yeah, I've got those the, up here on the screen. So. We are already paying thirty six hundred dollars a month in the budget, which for we don't want to pay. <laughs> but well, uh, I understand that was a lot of money to pay. I understand you don't want to pay it, but at the same time, um, Deerfield, you know, we didn't have a budget for maintenance in that other building, mm -hmm. which was small. It was not conducive to a senior center. Um, it was not, you know, newer. It wasn't renovated. Um, yeah, I don't think you have to convince so, anybody that that the old situation was worse, and we're trying to do something better. And better is gonna mm -hmm. just freaking cost some money. Yeah, that's all there is to it. And we got to decide what do we value here. Do we want to have right. a really nice place for our seniors and honestly the rest of the community to uh, mm -hmm. be able to go to for things and activities like our survey says, or do right. we want to just, oh, we never paid this before, so let's not do anything. I think that's 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 not, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think you're really suggesting that, Trevor. But I, I, we, we, we are going to have to expect that it's going to cost us 
some money. It may cost us more than $3,600 a month, but I think Jennifer is right in pointing out that, hey, with what we have now, which is an improvement, and the numbers show it, that it's an improvement, people are voting with their feet on how much right. of an improvement things are now compared to what they were, that I think I mean, we've got support for this. So if, if we have to pay a little bit of money for it, I think it's going to be money well spent and well invested in our community. So I'm I'm all for trying to move forward on this. I know we can't uh, make it. Uh, I don't know what degree of commitment we can make at this point because we need to explore what other costs are. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm hoping at the end of this meeting that we can agree that we are positively disposed toward moving the senior center there um, if we can work out all the details. Um, yeah. Could we get um, area building inspectors in to just take a look? What do they think it would need? Maybe get some idea of cost on like taking out those walls. Are they load bearing or they're not? Like, they're not load bearing. I know, but get an idea of kind of what, what would need to happen to make this place what you'd want it to be, what the towns want it to be. Find out if someone, you know, has uh, a, Yeah, has so a, you're saying move forward on getting a more detailed estimate. Yeah. Yeah. I, think that's, yeah, exactly. I think that's a good next step. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, and one of the things that that um, that you all are aware, and I've shared this before, um, I've now with the additional funding that we received um, for programming um, in, with, within September, I've now received in grant funding more money than my annual budget. Mm -hmm. And in addition to carry forward fund in around 20000 I actually carried forward $26,000 um, from fiscal 23. And we're getting an additional $6,054 permanently put into our formula fund thanks to um, the advocacy of NCOA and the governor signing into um, law a $14 for older adults from 60 and up instead of just $12. Mm -hmm. So, in addition to the increase of um, from twenty seven two fifty two to thirty nine seven fifty six, we're adding an additional six thousand dollars to that total for formula fund. Um, we've also been getting it um, from our new members, you know, steady donations for participating mm -hmm. in classes and um, just in general. So, I think um, you know the numbers show that we need a space. Oh, yeah. Um, no doubt. And, you know, every single person I've spoken to, um, I've mentioned this at multiple meetings or multiple events at the senior center, everyone, you know, the majority are for it. Um, the majority are like sick of waiting for, for them to feel important to the community. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason, you know, I, I brought up the budget from last year is you know, I got the SIG grant for Chris, Chris's position for this fiscal year, which we weren't sure we were going to get. So, you know, there's additional monies to go into. Do we know that SIG grant will be here next year or not? Um, we got to make sure, like, not everything can be rosy. We got to make sure, like, okay, yeah. if that doesn't happen, worst case, worst case scenario budgeting and, like, and then let's figure out what the rent would be. You know, I don't know what the how long the loan would be, kind of what they would need to cover, and then mm -hmm. factor in the expenses that we'd need to do it. Just kind of get a get a budget so we can go to capital and say, hey, look, we're looking to make this move. This is the investment that we need. Um, we're not looking for a $6 million loan to build a new building. We're looking for, you know, rent because Sunderland looks to be, you know, purchasing it and will plan to rent to us. So, well, can I, so question to you on that is if, I have rent calculated in my budget as around the $3,600. I bump it up to $4,000. Um, I don't necessarily foresee having to go in front of capital for that unless we needed a really large sum. And the only large sum that I was looking forward to asking for this fiscal year is towards the new van and asking each uh, town for $9,000 to go towards that. Well, we'll need to, we'll just need to know what, what the rent would be. I mean, that's really the, and then whatever construction moving, Kitchen. Let's just, if we're going to do it, mm -hmm. let's not skimp and go like, 
oh, we don't really need much this year. We're going to need to go, okay, kitchen needs to be done or yep. whatever, all that stuff. Lay it all out up front yeah, because if we nickel and dime after the fact, it'll just be like, no, it'll I be understand. painful. So just lay it out up front, worst case scenario. Here's what we need. Pull the Band-Aid off one and um, – then we can say, look, this is what a rent we figure the rent will be. You know, it's hard to tell, but some some kind of ballpark figure, and then um, construction costs. I mean, yeah, that up yep. and yeah, and it's cheaper than building a new building for sure. Yeah. And the other thing, um, I've been, as I mentioned before, in conversations with Conway, um, they are really, you know, the town administrator and the you know select board is really interested in having them join us mm -hmm. um i haven't unfortunately been able to further discuss with their council and aging director um sure. i was ill she was ill sure. um so you know but we've been in conversations because that would reduce the cost for everyone and and add them to what we're doing sure. um also um I have a letter, an email from someone who was unable to make it tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I Can I read that to you? Of course you can. Yeah. Um, it's from Gail Mason, a resident of Sunderland. Um, I was thrilled to learn that the South County Senior Center Board of Oversight has found a potential site, new site for the South County Senior Center. To be able to merge the Deerfield and Sunderland sites, you know, as we are now, mm -hmm. um, into one location in a building which does not require major overhaul you know, like the other locations yeah. do, yep. um, is in the best interest not only of the South County Senior Center Administration and the towns that support and oversee the center, but obviously also in the best interest of South County elders they serve. Administratively, the ability to move all of the resources and offer all of the services in one single location makes both financial sense and logistical sense. Programs and services and resources would be consolidated and managed much more efficiently. Staff would not have to move from site to site, nor would they have to negotiate the logistics of making sure the appropriate resources at each site are sufficient to meet the programming needs of that site. It would give elders full-time access to a single center, knowing that everything they rely on is available to them by walking through one door at a time that is convenient to them. As a former volunteer on the Sunderland Council of Aging, I am aware of the challenges facing the elders in our community and the challenges facing the South County Senior Center in meeting those needs. It will never be easy, nothing important ever is, but it would be, in my opinion, a most critical step forward for our communities, and I believe it will enable a great facility er, and greatly facilitate the growth of the South County Senior Center in service to our elders. Gail Mason. So, right. Um, over, but, I, yeah. um, Might this be a good time okay. to let the other folks in the room pipe in? I was um, just going to have them speak. So I yeah. to um, I see two people in the in the back. I think you referred to one of them as Sharon, but if you're Sharon, your head is like this big on my screen, so I can't see you. Um, okay. The folks in the room first, do you uh, have anything you'd like to add? Yep. Dan, Dan had a question. Had two questions. Just a couple of just quick things. Uh, okay. Just curious. Forgive me, I have to not know this, but how many okay. folks do folks use the bus now? Is it, is it the van? Yes. But do they use the regular? Do they use the, the, so the, we recently we ride the bus presentation or ride the route where about seven seniors went on a bus trip yeah. from here to the Hadley Mall okay. or to, to the Mountain Farms Mall. Yeah. Um, People don't regularly use it because number one, they didn't know how. Yeah. Um, for some people. Um, there's that barrier going from Waitley or Deerfield to Sunderland yeah. or Sunderland to Deerfield. Yeah, um, yeah. So we applied for and received a, a, SIG, a, a service incentive grant for transportation through Mass Council on Aging yeah. for about $16,912, I believe. Um, that particular grant is, had, has been funding um, Chris uh, Goudreau's hours to do transportation for those who meet that requirement. And then if, if it's not over the border kind of a thing, we just use our regular um, our regular hours to support that. But okay. between Chris and myself, we've been driving seniors where they need to go mostly to center. Yeah, and one really thought I had is because it's down on the edge of the town, mm -hmm. badly. <laughs> do I don't have any idea what Hadley does for any of this stuff. They but have a that, they have a big <laughs> brand big, new okay. Yeah, senior center. Yeah. Yep. 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 But um, you know, one of the things we can do is because there might, you know, there's 47 parking spaces 
Um, and then I think two handicap spaces at this space. Yeah. Yep. Um, you know, but there might be enough room for a loop to go around um, or at least for like an FRTA, yeah. if PVTA to come in and go around if we added one, yeah. um, they may be able to do that. We did, you know, talk about transportation and things like that along the main route here mm -hmm. um, with them. Okay. But, you know, we, we've started conversations with both the FRTA and the PBTA, okay, great. Um, you know, to try to move things forward. And that was part of that grant was getting letters of support from them, okay. um, you know, to try to fund seniors who sure. also use their services. It's a good show from the partner, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. but you okay. know, so that yep. there, okay. did, did you have another question? Uh, that's it. Um, Sharon, do you want to come over and sit here for a sec so Joyce can also see who or? Debbie, thank you so much. Um, this is Sharon Pachoric. She's been part of the Senior Center for a very long time. Yeah, um, I think we've met a, a time or two, Sharon, at, um, at uh, Franklin <laughs> County Board of Selectmen events. Long yeah. ago, yeah. long ago. Two years. Yeah. Well, I've been involved in the senior center for probably between 18 and 20 years. And we started out in the old center by the police station in Deerfield and had some bumps in the road. So we moved to the Holy Family Church Parish Hall. Some people don't come there because, quote, well, it's a religious place. Mm -hmm. They have different religions. Mm -hmm. So we lose those people there, too. But one of the biggest things there is no privacy. Yeah. Jen has brought our senior center up to a whole new level. And we're, we're blessed to have her on board. A uh, lot of new people. But they're still not happy that they don't have a home. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things that... Say Jen wants to talk to somebody privately, there's no place for her to go. Mm -hmm. Or our outreach coordinator, or me, head of triad. Um, people will tap me on the shoulder constantly. You've got to walk outside, or you've got to go in a corner. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a great opportunity for us to step up to the plate and finally find a home for our seniors. Yes. Yeah. And things like this don't pop up all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, Jen brought this forward. Um, I think Marie can agree that um, we all uh, were really doing the happy dance because of it. And people um, express their, uh, their feelings all the time because um, you're sitting in there, but you're still in a parish yeah, hall. You're not in the, you you're not have in the hall. office people there. Um, we have a wonderful uh, uh, priest, Father David. He's wonderful, but he's back and forth too. So you're constantly looking who's that and what's going on. And even Chris, I found out that people want to sit down. They want to talk to him. They want to tell him their needs. But they're in an open space where everybody can hear him. Yeah. And there's no privacy for him. Yeah. The other thing is the town nurse is in there, yeah. and she's in a classroom, and she's got to pull the door across shut. She's got no oh, privacy because people walk up and and want to go in have there too. Here as well. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Have her own space. And uh, again, I think this is a great opportunity. I've watched a lot happen over the years, and uh, from the little renovations or whatever for the old um, mm. building in Deerfield um, that was home, but there wasn't enough space there either right. on given days. Yeah. Jen does a lot of awesome events, and uh, people are sitting in there like this, and yeah. you know they're trying to move their chairs or or whatever. The kitchen, um, it's okay, it's functional for us at the moment. But it's had its bumps in the roads, too. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time to give her something she can put her stamp on, too, mm -hmm. and continue to move um, our towns forward. And we're three towns. We're not just yeah. one. 
it's so, rare that you find a building this shape and this, it, it, you know what it, I mean? Exactly. Kind of I kept condition. looking at it and looking at it. And uh, even husband John, who's been on the finance committee for mm -hmm. many years, but is off now. And he said, this is good. Yeah. This is good news. Mm -hmm. And right. like I said, it doesn't pop up every day to give you that amount of space either. Right. You know? Right. And, and property to go with it so right. you don't have to, Enough you know. To hold in. Right. Yeah. I mean, we can still, you know, make use of, like, Hurley Park and mm -hmm. other places in the town. But, you know, at least here we would be able to do everything, you know, mostly off this site, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our triad meetings are basically in the Waitley uh, Town Hall. God bless them for opening their door to us. She's wonderful over there. But we, you know, we look like a little space, too, to be more central and available mm -hmm. um, to the seniors, yeah. to the seniors, because they do have questions. And with transportation, I know that's a concern, but because we have this van and then we're moving forward to do the cash match to get the additional vehicle, we would be able to pick people up who wouldn't be able to drive there and bring them to center. Right. So even though it's a little bit ways away, we would be able to rectify that, right. you know, with the transportation opportunity. And we share a refrigerator with the church. Yeah. yeah. One little half is us and the other little half is them. And it's not unusual to see somebody walk through from the, from the church to go into the refrigerator to get yeah, something or put yeah. something in there, yeah. that kind of thing. So, and and also, you know, I mean, I'm sure, um, you know, there are certain days that the that we would normally be at program, but because the church has different events going on or certain religious holidays, you know, we on. have to to not be there and we're going like for our holiday party, we're going to the Wheatley Old Town Hall because there's something other event going on. Um, so, you know, there's just different things, and it would be great because then we could be open five days a week instead of three days a week. Have we reached out to Mitch at all yet? I, I have not. I um, Jeff Kravitz just basically emailed to get the Board of Oversight's opinion and feedback, so that's why I prompted the meeting for this week. Marie, do you want to say anything? Come over here so Joyce can and the camera can see you. I can probably home. hear you because I think uh, I, I think I'm getting the best audio from the table there. <laughs> Great. The table? Yep. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Can you say your name uh, again? Marie St. Peters. Marie. From Deerfield. Nice to meet you, Marie. Yeah. Uh, I started going to the Senior Center after I retired, so I've only been 12 years or so. But when it was at the original building, it was cozier. People played cards, people mm -hmm. played games, they they did crafts, they, they knitted. They, and now that they're at the church, it's, it's more like a hall. Mm -hmm. And people just don't have that that coziness. And even the, co the little coffee hours aren't, they're, it's just not the same. It's yeah. too big of a hall, there's nothing personal. Right. They have to be out by noon time. And even though we have somewhat use of the kitchen, we have to be gone by noon. So you can't, re you have to feed people at 10, 30 or 11 to be at cleaned up and out at 12. Mm -hmm. um, people, I think people would really, they, they're going to protest because you have to move. <laughs> <laughs> but I think once they had something they could go to and count on, uh, I think uh, I think that they would really go for it. And, and it would change who comes, maybe more people from Sunderland. But I, I think the people who really want a, a social life would adapt and come. And I think it's a beautiful building. I think more people will come too yes. because it's a, a nice clean space and yes. Yes. would be their own. And it's not like, oh, I'm just yes. going to the church today. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. They'll, have, they, they'll have make more of a home out of it. Yeah. I, I, I think, think it's a great place. I think these knitting cloths that they mm -hmm. had, and, uh, even the cribbage, I think it would warm mm -hmm. people to come for that. Mm -hmm. um, Just not to have to leave. It, 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 that's, <laughs> that's the hard part. Yeah. 
When you've got well, you look at tomorrow. Yeah, well, yeah. time to go. You're gonna yeah, have your hurry. Yeah, it's twelve o'clock and we're wiping the yeah. tables off right. in front of them. Well, even in the kitchen when we're doing activities and we're helping Jen, we're like sit. Yeah. There and you have to be super quiet because you're everybody's in the same room doing whatever's going on. And, and they yeah. will. The seniors are very vocal when they want to be. Yeah. Right. And they will yell. I assume we would need to beef up the kitchen some. Yes. Right. Um, with the kitchen, you know, there's a, there's an oven there, mm -hmm. um, but we would need a space for a larger refrigerator. Yeah. Um, I can't remember if there's a dishwasher in there. I think there is. Yeah. If there's not, we would have to, you know, put in a dishwasher. Um, yeah. The Ansel system, if we're because we would be using a stove top, right. As well as an oven, we, need we would need a an yeah. Ansel system, and right. those usually run around twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, mm -hmm. not cheap. But, but that's what I mean. List, list all that out. Yep. Get somebody in. What's it going to take to knock down these walls? And don't go on the, you know, just whatever it takes to do it right the first time. Yep. That way, like you said, you can be in getting started, but just get the stuff done. And yeah. That way, and, when you're in, you're in, and it's not. And I understand, you know, the concern about, oh, and Fran, do you want to say anything? Yeah, yeah, or, let's let Fran um, get in here. Well, I think the other two ladies have pretty much uh, pointed out what, the things in, I like the space. Um, I'm just concerned about people being resistant to driving that far, uh, mm -hmm. especially if Conway was to join us. But I think the space itself is beautiful. You have the sp separate room, so you can have a place for socializing, for playing cards. You have the office mm -hmm. space. I saw bookcases in one of the rooms there. It'd be great to set mm -hmm. up the area where it maybe start a um, book discussion group so that people would be reading the same book and and get involved that way. And mm -hmm. I understand the uh, problem with the church hall, that's for sure, but I think this, this space is very, um, would be a good place to, to go. It would it would right. be better if it was a different location, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I think people yeah. would adapt to it, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. It, we've been waiting a long time for our home, if you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is it's it that the dis the extra distance, which I was very surprised in how close it really was to where you are right now. Um the yeah. extra distance is the only downside. And what I'm hearing is that all of the upsides so much outweigh that one downside and that we've got, uh, we still have transportation problems for people to get to where we are, right? We still need yeah. that van. We're still using that to help transport people. So um, the extra four miles is not, is, is not really um, a barrier um, and it, these other advantages really outweigh that one yeah. disadvantage for the location. So and, I think at this point, it sounds like we have kind of a consensus that um, yeah. we want to move forward. We want to find the next steps. And one of the next steps is to figure out what kind of capital costs would we have? Capital costs being um, any reconstruction, uh, any new equipment we need to put in. And um, I'm wondering if, uh, you know, how, how that would happen, like whose plate is that on? And if it all lands on Jennifer's plate, I think we want to figure out a way to get at least some of that off of her plate. Um, and do mm -hmm. we need another uh, another trip o visit over there, perhaps to, um, I, would love to I don't know if Dan's actually seen it. Uh, sounds like maybe not. It would probably be good for him to see it. Um, and then um, our memories being what they are, it would probably <laughs> help us refresh our memory to be able to maybe even bring a, a contractor with us who could give us some estimates on costs for things um as we yep. as we go through there so is that like i i would not be at all afraid to put organize that meeting on jennifer's plate but i wouldn't want to put yep. it on her plate to oh, go make the visit and figure out which walls are coming down and so on i think that's something yep. we should actively be involved in and and honestly, if there were some seniors who also wanted to come along on that, some people who are particularly interested in um, 
in you know making good suggestions for this senior center uh, or potential senior center, right? Because it's uh, it doesn't happen until the building actually gets bought and deals get worked out. But it just it seems like that's one next step. And I guess the other next step um, would be, um, and maybe Jennifer can fill in. What does the town of Sunderland need to have from us to for them to make the next step? Mm -hmm. um, I a letter of email. support or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to draft a letter? Yeah. You could draft a letter of support, and um, and in it, I think we should recognize that we would be paying rent. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, um, that, that, that that's got to be part of it, and. Uh, we don't know how much that would be, but um, I oh, I suppose I should be able to do this math in my head. But you know, two million dollars, thirty year loan depends on the interest rate right. and so on. I I, I would be yeah. I, I'd be surprised if we would have to pay a lot more than we're already paying to use, say, I don't know, half the building. That's the other thing I don't remember if like was half the building. Were we talking about two thirds of the building? Were we talking like? What fraction of the building were we talking about? That's uh, another thing I didn't really yeah. remember. I do know we wanted the whole indoor track. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, that, that's something I was going to say is we want the track part, yeah. which, you know, is part of the hallway. So, I mean, you know, if we designated, um, you know, if anybody's on that side, please yeah. look out your window or yeah. your door and pause and yield before <laughs> because you're going to be watching. Yeah, I think so, someone you know. has that discussion. What needs do you have? Sure. Are there spaces in there that you you must have? And of yeah. course, we would love all of it. Yeah. But if we don't, if we understand we don't need, we'd love to have the 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 nurse there. We yeah. would, you know, have her there. She would, you know, be, yeah. be willing. And then, um, can I say something yeah. else too? Sure. Um, hmm. The sure. old thing they had uh, South County Triad bought new furniture for there. Yeah. And Jen has some <laughs> here. <laughs> and it's, the couch, the mm -hmm. chair, all that. Can go. But but that was their comfort zone. They had a place to go well, and sit, yeah. w which was more like being at home, mm -hmm. uh, oh, having a coffee, crazy, don't worry. And, and 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 talking. Yeah. The other thing that was a big hit too was a simple table up against the window facing North Main Street, and the men would come and they do puzzles. Yeah, and mm -hmm. sit in that sun. We have none of that. that. Yeah. None of it at all. Well, it's part of the capital with it's furniture, furniture yep. tables, yeah. all that. Tissues, and that kind of stuff. You know, um, one of the things I spoke with um, uh, Ludlow's senior center director, Jody, um, you know, a couple different times, and they did, as, as the town director, they, you know, they were able to do some fundraising in a certain aspect. Mm -hmm. Now I know, you know, there's been different things to create a 501c3 or whatnot, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, that's not a huge active thing, but if we could also, you know, do some fundraising um, in certain dynamics, I don't know if Triad can do fundraising on behalf of us because you're a, you're a 50 or a separate entity. You're not part of the senior center technically. Right. So, I mean, you know, working together to maybe help offset some of those costs. Um, and there's also different grants. There's a grant right now that um, I uh, am submitting for next Thursday the 9th um, for up to $25,000 for kitchen stuff. If I know for a fact that we're going to be going forward and doing this, mm -hmm. I can put in there instead of just, you know, a new, well, I'm going to purchase a new refrigerator a freezer, um, and, you know, I was going to get some sh yeah. stack of shelves stuff for our pantry here, but I can add more to that, but the work needs to be done by, like, June of next year. But if I purchase those items with that other space in mind, mm -hmm. you know, I can add that to our, um, to our ask because there's that. And then, excuse me, for modernizing the senior center, and one of the items, a couple of the items I was going to purchase are for um, for visually impaired individuals because you you know can get certain things, mm -hmm. but I can you know focus it on certain pieces. 
Um, and there might be other grant opportunities that come out as well, mm -hmm. you know, over the next year that I can apply for, um, you know, so. Okay. So write the letter of support. Yep. You guys check in, see what you need yep. to yep. purchase. Come up, um, with, come up with a schedule. Yep. Schedule, how it all happen. I can talk with Bob Walden and see if when that meeting happens, yep. have him over. He's a contractor and yep. our building inspector, so he could take a look. And just say, hey, we think it might, you know, he might not be able to give us a dollar amount exactly, but, oh, you're looking at this or you're looking at that. And, yes, you can do that. Yes, you can do that. Just kind of give yeah, us a that, layout of. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And that is kind of what we need. Um, yeah. I think Fran's got I um, her hand up. Um, Fran, why don't you go ahead? Um, I think it would be wonderful to get a tour of the building and to uh, send out a letter yeah. to the Council on Aging members in all three towns so that we could actually see the space. Yeah, well, um, that'd be great. Yeah, so for this meeting, I think what, as a practical matter, what would you think of this? Um, Jennifer, the people who need to be there would be, I think the Board of Oversight, perhaps Jeff Kravitz should be there. Um, the contractors whose name I just forgot, but get, you just said it though. Um, uh, Bob Walden. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, and, and Jennifer should be there. So if we settle on a time that works for that group, then advertise that time to uh, the, the seniors who you know are interested, people who, for example, came to this meeting, Fran is suggesting maybe the triads uh, be given a head up um, and uh, invite those who can come uh to that time but but let's let's settle the time based on the the people who have to be there and um hopefully yep. have that sooner rather than later rather than trying to delay until we can get you know a, a, you know a big ton of people there does that make sense yeah, as a way to move forward i i think so um joyce what's your class schedule like when can you squeeze out during the daytime um, generally speaking, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, generally, uh, Tuesday afternoons are also pretty open. Um, what time on Monday, Wednesday, Friday are good before or after a certain time? I figured this was going to be a daytime thing, right? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, I'd say daytime. On any given day, there may be meetings scheduled, right? <laughs> oh, daytime. I mean, I can I can be there at seven a.m. Um, but uh, let's see. I mean, we should do this part offline. Um, but, but I this semester I have a rather open schedule, so um, so it's actually better than usual. Oh, that's great! I will definitely take advantage of that. One last thing for the record: it's only three miles. Yeah, three miles. Okay, good. It's only three miles from there. Right, it's four miles from the church. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but you know what? Um, if people need transportation, all they have to do is call. Yep. You can pick them up. Great. We have been advertising that a lot. All right. Um, you know, so people are using the van. More. Yes, we are getting a lot more yeah, people using the van. To the we went yeah, to the big yeah, yeah. yeah. That was fun. The bus was fun. It was yeah. awesome. I've never done it before. Well, I didn't yeah. either. Yeah. Even uh, husband John went. Nice. Had a good time. Yeah. He said, I can do that again. Great. Because, and the other thing, too, is, is by having a, a, a second vehicle. Mm -hmm. We don't have to rent a van right. or a bus. I mean, unless we get like together. a lot of people, yeah, yeah. we had, you know, seven people on the COA van. I rented a, a van for 12 people from Enterprise Great. and we had a blast. Right. Everybody had a good it's time. A good, it's it's a good good trip. Trip. We had I a can imagine. <laughs> um, so, yeah. so I just want to recap because um, um, the, the um, capital request items, how much windows, for the van? Um, the van I'm going to ask for is twenty seven thousand total. So I was going to ask each town for nine thousand right. dollars to spread it around. Yep. Okay. So I've got that, and you all voted on that at our last meeting that that yep. was okay. Um, so even if we, you know, I I get a hold of all these people within the, you know tomorrow, and we move forward with this, you know, for next week, mm -hmm. um, and we get a ballpark like estimate. 
say five hundred thousand dollars or you know maybe not that much. I'm just you know throwing it out there. Yeah. I mean, whatever happened to the earmark for a hundred thousand dollars? So we have that ear. We have that earmark. We can use. And then you know maybe um, we ask for another one. I mean it doesn't hurt to ask. Especially if we have have a a space to purchase a place we're all trying to get in. Hey, what else can we do? Can you help us? Yeah. Mr. McGovern, Um, Mr. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, uh, Mr. Neal got Warren or Worthington. Was yeah. it Worthington or Wash Worthington? I think it was a million dollars from yeah. the federal budget. So I kind of want to go asking, you know, they can the get their act together and actually run the government. We might have some money. So what I'll do then is um, you have your draft. If we approximate, even if I just budget for $4,000 a month, Joyce, you know, mm-hmm. for a rent piece in here and then we have a ballpark of what we ask yeah. for capital. Maybe Jeff um, can figure out what he thinks. When are our leases yeah. up, Jeff? Um just so everyone's aware, our lease um one is up in April and the other one is up in May. Okay. So we got a few months. Um All so right. we've got a few months. Now I don't know, you know, uh, Dan, if Sunderland has select board has, you know, chatted much about this or, you know, like if you just started the conversation, because we just got the email last week about yeah, it. Yeah. Um, so I just, you know, wasn't yeah, sure where the process. meeting with all three towns, let yeah, us know yeah, what yeah. happened to get so together. Jeff will, Jeff will reach back. Yeah, appreciate it. Talk, yeah, talk with Casey, Brian, and we'll work with make sure that this is yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Sorry about that. You know. yeah. yeah, we'll all get together. On so it. then um, this budget stuff will go forward once we have a yeah. meeting and um, – Sounds yeah. Good. Is there anything else anyone wants to talk about? Um, do we want to schedule another? Well, we can schedule another meeting like this after mm-hmm. we have our walkthrough. Yeah. That's and right. I'll post it as a yeah, as a as meeting. meeting. Yeah, we we have one for November sixteenth. Yeah. Do we want to keep that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might as well. And it's not that far off. Yeah. Yeah. And it's then, only a couple um, weeks. So <laughs> maybe. The other thing is, do we going to do? Um, Christmas dinners for the seniors this year. So we the Tom. We, I mean, events have usually got. So uh, we have Friendsgiving is our big event in November. Um, yeah. We're all set. We have the turkeys donated through okay. uh, and cooked through the Greenfield Triad. Yeah. Leo's table is doing all the sides. We got right. a donation of some pies from Sunderland Elementary PTO. They, they thought of us. So we right. have some of those. So we're working on dessert. Um, I have not heard anything about the holiday dinner, so I was. I know he was excited to do it again. Yeah, so I, I was going to reach out to him too. So if we both do, yeah, that'd be great. But uh, Christmas Day Maybe. this year is on a Monday. Okay. Um, so keep that in mind. Last yep. year we did it on Christmas Day. I know right. um, we had a ton of volunteers, so yep. I think if we get that um, that definitive, mm-hmm. you know, we'll be able to do that. Yeah. Um, and I confirmed today if you're so inclined to join us for our countdown to noon at New Year's Eve party, we will be having chicken wire as our new school. Oh, cool. Oh, right. Yep. I just right. heard I'm at the Moose Club. I just yeah. got got it confirmed with Alana today. Right. So. That's great. So when's that? Uh, September. September. Yeah, September. <laughs> <laughs> December 29th. Okay, good. At 10 a.m., 10 to 12, 10 12. At, at the church nice. location. That's great. Um, so, yeah. And then our Chris, our um, holiday party. We're moving our holiday party because there's something else going on at the church to the Waitley Old Town Hall, and we'll have Ruth um, Lady Sherman okay. singing singing for that. Right. She did a good job. Yeah. Triad yeah. contributed yeah. to that. Triad does a great job. They just sponsored our coffee with a cop yesterday, yeah. and we had a you know about yeah, thirty really folks turned yeah. out, so yeah. it was great. The guys um, had a great time. Good. Anything else that we need to talk about? Nope. Well, uh, on the agenda, it talks about capital improvement, committee funds, requests, and initial budget review. I've got the initial budget, and I feel like we've reviewed it. And it's not like, I, I mean, it looks very much like like previous ones, and we've talked about it a little. I mean, it's it's early in the budget cycle, so I think that's probably sufficient review at the moment. Yeah. And I know it's going to be updated. I don't have anything about capital improvements, but I think that's going to change when we have this meeting. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's I think I that's mean. we've really covered item C on the agenda as much as we can tonight, yep. and that will be a continuing item on future 
um, agendas. I don't have any unanticipated items. Do you have any on that end? No, I don't either. Okay. Well, then I would okay, um, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. Okay. Second. Well, since we are online, we actually have to take a roll call vote for that. So, Trevor. Trevor McDaniel, yes. I. Great. Right. Dan. Yes. Uh, Joyce. Yes. All right. Great. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thanks for pulling this together on such short notice, Jen. Yeah. No problem. Great. Thank you all for being available. Thank you, Fran. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thank Fran, you. for joining, Fran. All right. Thank you. You're Thanks for coming, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye bye.